In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the contact forces between blocks. So let's start with a two block system. So let's say if we have a two kilogram block and a three kilogram block. And let's apply a force of 20 newtons. So this is the applied force F. What is the force exerted by the two kilogram block on the three kilogram block? How can we calculate this force? So first, let's find the total mass of the system. The total mass is two plus three, or five kilograms. Now, what is the net acceleration of the system? The acceleration it's going to be the applied force divided by the total mass based on Newton's second law, which F equals ma. So A is F divided by m. So that's 20 over 5, and that's 4 meters per second squared. Now, both blocks will move at the same acceleration. So what is the net force on the 2 kilogram block? And what is the net force on the 3 kilogram block? The 2 kilogram block moves at an acceleration of 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. So the net force on the 2 kilogram block is 8 newtons. The net force on the 3 kilogram block is 3 times 4. So that's uh, 12 newtons. Now let's say if we have a block and if we apply a force of 30 newtons. And if we apply another force of 12 newtons to the left, what is the net force on this block? The net force is going to be directed towards the right, and it's 30 minus 12, it's 18. Now, if you have these two forces, and if you want to find this one, it's going to be 30 minus 18. Likewise, if we apply a force of 20 newtons to the right, and if the net force is 8, there must be a force that is directed towards the left acting on the 2 kilogram block. 20 minus 8 is 12. This force is the force that the 3 kilogram block exerts on the 2 kilogram block. And according to Newton's third law, for every action force there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Therefore, the force that the 2 kilogram block exerts on the 3 kilogram block is also 12. So that's how you could find the contact force between two blocks. Now let's say that the 2 kilogram block is M1 and the 3 kilogram block is M2. It turns out there's a simpler way that you can calculate this force. So the force exerted on the, let's say the second block, by the first block, which that force is directed towards the right. That force is equal to the mass of the object that it pushes towards the right, which is the 3 kilogram mass, or m2, divided by the total mass, m1 plus m2, times the applied force. So that force is going to be m2, which is 3, divided by m1 plus m2, which is 2 plus 3, that's 5 times the applied force of 20. 20 divided by 5 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. So that's a simple equation that you can use to find the contact force between two blocks. So make sure that the mass on the top is basically the mass of the block that's away from this force. And now let's try another example. Now let's say this is M1, M2, and M3. And let's say that the first block has a mass of 2 kilograms, the second is 3, and the third is 4. And let's apply a force of 45 newtons. Calculate the contact force between each block. So find the force that block 1 exerts on block 2, and that block 2 exerts on block 3. 
So first, let's find the total mass. The total mass of the system is 9 kilograms. And the acceleration of the system is going to be the total force, or the applied force, divided by the total mass. So that's 45 divided by a total mass of 9. So the acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. So each block has an acceleration of 5. Next, let's calculate the net force acting on each block. So M1 has a mass of 2 and an acceleration of 5. So 2 times 5 is 10. So it has a net force of 10 newtons. M2 has a net force of 3 times 5, which is 15 newtons. And M3 has a net force of 4 times 5, which is 20 newtons. 10 plus 15 plus 20 adds up to 45. So now that we have the net force in each block, what is the force that block 2 exerts on block 1? It's going to be 45 minus 10, which is 35. So the force that block 1 exerts on block 2 is also 35 newtons. Now what is the force that block 3 exerts on block 2? It's going to be 35 minus 15, which is 20. So therefore, the force that block 2 exerts on block 3 is also 20. They have to be the same according to Newton's third law. Now that we have the contact forces, let's see if we can come up with an equation that can help us find it quickly. So let's find the force that block 1 exerts on block 2. So that force is going to be the masses that block 1, that this force pushes to the right. So the force exerted by 1 on 2 is going to be m2 plus m3 because this force has to push blocks 2 and 3 divided by the total mass times the applied force. So block 2 and 3, that's 3 plus 4, that's 7 kilograms. The total mass is 9, and the applied force is 45. So 45 divided by 9 is 5, and 5 times 7 is 35. So that's how you can calculate this particular uh, contact force. So now, let's calculate the other contact force. So the force exerted by block 2 on block 3. Now that force only pushes block 3 to the right. So that's going to be the mass of block 3 divided by the total mass times the applied force. So it's going to be 4 out of 9 times the applied force of 45. So 45 divided by 9 is 5, and 5 times 4 is 20. So that's how you can get this answer. So now you know how to find the contact force if you know the masses and the applied force. Now let's try a problem with friction present. So let's say if there's three blocks, block one, block two, and block three. So let's call this M1 m2 and m3 so let's say the first block has a mass of one kilogram the second one is two and the third is three and let's apply a force of 24 newtons to the right now let's say that this system moves to the right with constant velocity keyword constant velocity and let's say there's friction between the blocks and the surface. Knowing this information, how can you calculate the contact forces between each block? So what is the force that block 1 exerts on block 2 and the force that block 2 exerts on block 3? Now because the system moves to the right with constant velocity, the net acceleration is 0. 
which means the net force is zero. If the net force is zero, that means that the total kinetic friction must be equal to 24 newtons, because 24 minus 24 is zero. Now, since the net acceleration is zero, the net force acting on each block must also be zero newtons. Now the acceleration due to the applied force is 24 divided by the total mass of 6, which is positive 4. Now the acceleration due to friction is 24 over 6, but it's really negative 4 because it decelerates the object. So the net acceleration is 0. Now the reason why I did that is to find the frictional force on each block separately. The frictional force on block 3 only is the mass of block 3 times the frictional acceleration. So 4 times 3 is 12. Now you could say it's negative 12, but the negative value means that this force is directed towards the left. So I'm just going to say 12 newtons. So keep in mind, this is the frictional force acting on block 3. The frictional force acting on block 2 is 4 times 2. It's 8 newtons. And the frictional force acting on block 1 is 4 times 1, is 4 newtons. So with this information, we can calculate the contact force. Now, if the net force is to be 0, the forces direct towards the right, which is only one force, must be equal to all the forces direct towards the left acting on block 1. So we have a frictional force of 4 newtons on block 1 which means that there must be a contact force of 20 newtons on block 1 because 4 and 20 adds up to 24. So block 2 exerts 20 newtons of force on block 1. Therefore, block 1 exerts 20 newtons of force on block 2. So that's how you can find the contact force. Now let's focus on block 2. Block 2 feels a 20 newton force directed towards the right and it feels a frictional force of 8 newtons. That means that there must be another 12 newton force pushing block 2 to the left, so that the net force on block 2 is 0. Therefore, this missing force, the 12 newtons, is the force that block 3 exerts on block 2. And therefore, that's supposed to be 12, not 20. So therefore, the block, the force that block 2 exerts on block 3 is also 12 newtons, which is equal to this force, because it has to add up to 0. And there's no other contact forces acting on block 3 towards the left. So therefore, the force that 1 exerts on 2, which is the same as 2 on 1, is 20, and the contact force that 2 exerts on 3, or 3 on 2, is 12 if the system is moving with constant velocity. Now what if the velocity is not constant? What if there is a net acceleration? So let's call this uh, M1, M2, M3. And let's say M1 has a mass of 3 kilograms, M2 is uh, 4, and M3 is 5. And let's apply a force of 36 newtons. Now let's say that g is 10. And mu k, the coefficient of kinetic friction, let's say it's 0.10 or 0.1. And let's say the system is moving towards the right, but not at constant velocity. Let's say if it's accelerating. So what would you do in this particular case to find the contact forces between each block. So what we need to do is find the acceleration of the whole system. So let's begin by finding the total mass. The total mass is 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 12 kilograms. Now let's calculate the total frictional force. Kinetic friction is equal to uh, mu k times the normal force. And the normal force on a horizontal surface is simply the weight force, which is mg. Now, if we wish to find the total kinetic friction, let's use the total mass of 12. So mu k is uh, 0.1. 
m, we're going to use 12 kilograms, and g is uh, 10. 10 times 0.1 is 1, and 1 times 12 is 12. So the total frictional force directed towards the left is uh, 12 newtons, which means that the net force on all three blocks, you can treat this as one block with a mass of 12. The net force on that composite block is 36 minus 12, which is 24 newtons. So therefore, the net acceleration is the net force of 24 divided by the total mass of 12, and that's 2 meters per second squared. So every block moves with the same acceleration of 2 meters per second squared towards the right. So now we can calculate the net force on each block. So 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, and 5 times 2 is 10. So the individual net force on each block, 6 plus 8 plus 10, is equal to the total net force of the composite block, which is 24. So now that we have the net force on each block, let's calculate the frictional force on each block. So the frictional force is 12, and the acceleration due to the frictional force is going to be the frictional force, 12, divided by the total mass of 12, which is 1. It's really negative 1, but we're just going to use 1. So now, the frictional force acting on block 1 is going to be the acceleration of 1 times 3, which is 3. The frictional force acting on block 2 is 1 times 4, that's 4. And for block 3, 1 times 5, which is 5. Notice that the individual frictional forces adds up to the total frictional force acting on the composite block. So now that we have the frictional force on each block, and we have the net force on each block, we can calculate the contact force on each block. So let's focus on block 1. So block 1 feels a force of 36 newtons directed towards the right, and it feels a frictional force of 3 newtons. Now, block 2 exerts a force on block 1, which we're looking for, and the net force is 6. That means that the 36 newton force directed towards the right is 6 newtons greater than the sum of these two forces. So 36 minus 6 is 30, minus 3 is 27. So that's how you could find the contact force that block 2 exerts on block 1. So I'm going to put that in red. So block 2 exerts 27 newtons of force on block 1, which means 1 exerts 27 newtons of force on block 2. Now let's focus on block 2. Block 2 feels a force of 27 newtons exerted by block 1 directed towards the right. Now block 2 has a net force of 8 newtons, and it feels a frictional force of 4 newtons. So we got to find the missing contact force. So the 27 newton force is 8 newtons greater than the sum of these two forces. So 27 minus 8 is 19, and 19 minus 4 is 15. So that is the contact force. So we have a force of 27 towards the right, a force of 19 towards the left. So 27 minus 9, we can see why, I mean minus 19, we can see why the net force is 8. So therefore, the contact force is 15. So the force that block 3 exerts on block 2 is uh, 15 newtons. And the force that block uh, 2 exerts on block 3 is also 15. So that's how you could find the two contact forces. Now, to make sure that these answers are correct, everything has to balance. So the forces on block 3 must be balanced. Now, let's double check it. So on block 3, block 3 fills the force of 15 newtons directed towards the right, because that's the force that block 2 exerts on 3. Now, block 3 has a frictional force of 5. 15 minus 5 will give us a net force of 10, which we see here. So therefore, everything works out. All the numbers add up, and that's it. So now you know how to find the contact force when friction is present and when it's not present.